Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Cook with Chandi. I'm going to make a pan fried cod fish with three ways of carrot, which has salty carrot, carrot puree, and fried carrot. Also, when we cook cod fish, we have to be careful because it's a delicate fish and it can get overcooked very easily. So to keep the fish moisture is very important. So let's learn how to make it moist, nice, pan fried cod as well. This is a very easy dish and let's make it. Okay then. Let's make carrot crisps by dipping carrot ribbons into the heated oil. Set aside when it's golden brown. Boil baby carrots in a salted water until tender. Take it out. Same water. Add carrot dices to make the puree and let it boil. Meantime, get a pan heated with some oil and fry the tender carrots until nicely brown. If you want more caramelization, you can add a little bit of sugar to get nicely browned. Once it's done, take it out. Use the same pan, add a little bit of oil, saute, slice carrot and cabbage. Here you can saute nicely with a little bit of butter, garlic, salt and pepper. This is going to be the base of our dish. Sort nicely until tender. Now the carrot is ready. You can puree the carrot. Here you can add flavors if you want. Blend it nicely until it gets puree. Add a knob of butter, salt, pepper to the taste. That butter gives a nice silky texture to the puree. Get a piece of cod. This is a starter size so you don't need to have a big piece around 150 grams. 100 grams would be more than enough and season with salt and olive oil. Rub it nicely. Get a pan heated with some oil and start frying the cod skin side down. Add a knob of butter to keep the moisture during the cooking process and at the same time gives a nice flavor to the fish. You can add a wedge of lemon to give more flavor. This butter getting nicely lemony flavor. Once the cord is nicely cooked, take it out and leave it for rest. Let's start plating. Get our carrot and cabbage to the bottom of the plate and you can put the cod on top and pile the carrots and crispy carrots on top as I'm doing now. You can plate as you like. This is how I'm doing. So after we can pour our carrot puree around and put some lemon juice, also little bit of lemony butter. Cod and three way of carrot dish is done. Going to make, I'm going to call a sambal which is one of the more very popular dish in Sri Lanka. Uh, you can call as a accompaniment in Sri Lankan food. Uh, these leaves you cannot find everywhere in the world, but you can find very easily watercress 
that's the best solution to replace this. Use the watercress instead of gochu cola if you cannot find and make the salad the same way you will get almost same result. So let's make it. What is gochu cola? It is a small perennial herbaceous plant found in wetland in Asia also called as a Centrilla Asiatica or Indian Pennywort. This is used in Ayurvedic treatments as a very strong medicine for many more illnesses and also with many cosmetic treatments especially with skin care. According to the Ayurveda, Gotukala can regenerate nerves and brain cells also capable of increasing intelligence and brain power has a very strong power to heal wounds cuts and burns according to the ayurveda also doing a huge role in blood circulation strengthening the blood vessels stimulating the flow of blood and prevent thrombosis also used for anxiety and depression help to increase dopamine level and help reduce stress hormone. Also used as a remedy for stomach pain and gastric ulcers. In the salad, we are going to chop tomatoes. Red onions, finely chopped, green chilies nicely chopped and some lemon to balance the flavor and give a acidity flavor as well that can help to elevate the flavor of the gotu cola gotu cola is little bit bitter so that can help to balance the flavor now we add all our chopped items gotu cola chop onion, chop tomato, mix well add pepper salt always according to your taste Now we're going to add grated coconut. Mix it well. This is the time to add lime juice. Squeeze half a lime. chili if you like more spice if you like more you can add little more always depend on your flavor and preference mix it well and now we are going to serve I'm going to put it into a bowl which I arranged before so that's all you can use it as an accompaniment for your lunch show you how to make
make a creamy mushroom soup which is very popular these days and it's very good for the winter time you will keep warm and let's try how is make let's get ready with the ingredients chop onion Chop garlic, slice some garlic and leave it separate for the garnish. Chop potato. Mushrooms. Today I am going to use the button mushroom. Slice it and chop it. Portobello mushroom for the garnish. Peel off the skin, slice it little thicker, leave it side. Get a pan heated with oil, add onion, garlic and saute gently. Add potato, continue cooking. This potato gives the texture and body to the mushroom soup. Now add the mushroom, cook for the few minutes and add the stock. Today I am going to use the chicken stock. If you like vegetable stock, you can add vegetable stock or mushroom stock. Cover it and cook further another 20 minutes. Meantime, we're going to get ready with our garnish. First, get a pan with oil, heat it gently, add garlic, and let it fry until slightly golden brown, and take it off. Sprinkle some salt, and set aside. Add some butter and fry the mushroom. Turn upside down, correct the seasoning salt pepper and let it fry until golden brown. Once it's golden brown, add chopped onion. Add leeks, cook further one or two minutes, correct the seasoning, salt, pepper and switch off the heat. Add almonds, parsley, mix it well. Finally add some chives and set aside for the garnish. Now our soup is almost ready. Finally add some cream, let it boil. Once it's boiled we are going to blend the soup. Time to blend. Look at the soup is almost ready. It's nice in texture. One last ingredient to add. Switch off the heat and add a knob of butter. And let the butter to melt with the heat of the soup. Now our soup is ready, we are going to plate in. Arrange the garnish middle of the bowl along with a parmesan shaving. Pour over the soup. I put the rest of the mushroom.
स्लाइस गार्लिक एंड पामसन फिनिश विथ ऑलिव ऑयल एंड सम चॉप्ड चाइव Today I'm going to use kabocha squash, one of the Japanese varieties of winter squash. These days, this variety of pumpkin becoming very popular. Look at the skin; it's hard, but inside is so beautiful, rich in yellow and orange color. By flavor, it's sweet, nutty. and fluffy with texture look this skin is tough but it's completely edible and full of nutrition so cut them into pieces and drop into the oven tray season with salt pepper and dried herbs especially you can use it thyme and drop some olive oil At the same tray you can put onions garlic and little more olive oil and send it to the oven for about 180 degrees oven around 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes more than enough Meantime you can get ready with the garnish get a pan with heated oil drop some pumpkin seed fry them once it's come to golden brown take it off sprinkle some salt paprika powder and set aside look the pumpkin is all nicely cooked and ready for the soup you can see the caramelization going through and get a pan drop all the pumpkin and the mixture to the pan heat it up with stock for that you can use chicken stock or vegetable stock according to your preference today i'm going to use the vegetable stock let it simmer for about 10 minutes because the squash because the pumpkin is already cooked so you don't need to cook too long once it's done get a blixer and blend it add double cream mix it well If it's too thick you can add little bit more stock but in this case the texture is completely fine so I'm happy correct the seasoning with salt pepper if you need any more finally once the soup is done 
add a knob of butter this is very important in any soup to get a nice glossy texture finally add a knob of butter that gives the final flavor and the glossiness to the soup see the soup is almost done it's ready now time to plating this is how i'm plating i'm using a small piece of pumpkin as a garnish as well and pour over the soup and sprinkle some roasted nuts coriander and sprinkle some paprika and drizzle olive oil on top to final the dish how to make hot and spice cuttlefish this is very quick and you can use it as a accompaniment with fried rice or any other lunch options why not try let's see how i make it let's slice the onions into rings and separate them next capsicums cut them into slices if you cannot find the capsicums you can use the bell peppers next spring onions cut them into baton shape get some dry chilies soak them in warm water and squeeze the water out get a separate bowl add corn flour plain flour salt turmeric mix them together now add squid If you want to know how to clean and prep the squid, I have a video done. The link is in the description box. Coat all the seasoned flour. Now fry the chilies. As I said before, make sure to squeeze all the excess water out otherwise the hot oil will flash out and burn yourself. Fry them and set aside. Next is squid. Fry them into crispy and golden brown. Make sure to fry them in a small batches to get crispy. fry them in small batches once it done take it out get a wok with some chili paste this chili paste is homemade if you want to know how to make homemade chili paste the link is in the description box you can follow and make your own chili paste this stage you don't need to get too hot 
because otherwise the chili paste will get burned. Add all your vegetables and squid. Mix together. Toss them until all the flavors coat with vegetables and the squid. Now the dish is ready to serve. See, all coated nicely. The dish is ready to serve. I'm going to show you how to make a fried rice. Let's see the ingredients and start making. Okay then, let's go. Ginger, garlic, curry leaves, Carrot, white cabbage, eggs, spring onion, and leeks. Also, chili paste which I made last time. Get a wok heated and spread the oil around the wok. When you make the fried rice, it's very important to get the pan coated nicely the oil otherwise it will get sticky everywhere add garlic ginger and curry leaves fry them until golden brown add carrot cabbage and leeks when you make a fried rice it's very important slice all the vegetables thinly because it's a very fast process of cooking you need to get all the vegetable cooked fast now add egg and make a scramble Season with salt and continue scrambling. When it's getting halfway scrambled, you can see it's halfway cooked. You can mix the vegetable and the rice. To make a good fried rice, you need to use cold rice. For the best use, the yesterday rice, when you add rice, best to add before egg completely cook as I did. That helps to get a nice egg coat around the rice. If you like to use soy sauce, this is the time to add the soy sauce. But when you add the soy sauce, make sure to add the soy sauce to the heated pan, not direct to the rice. Because if you add direct to the rice, the soy sauce won't get cooked. You need to get that sizzling soy sauce to get the best flavor but today i'm not gonna use the soy sauce i'm using only the chili paste which i made if you want to find out homemade chili paste which i made the recipe is in the description box now mix the chili paste well
and adjust the seasoning this time salt pepper mix it well until all get coated when the fried rice is get ready you will get the smoke coming through the rice from the bottom shake well to coat all the ingredients and the flavors around the rice now our dish is almost done finally add the spring onion you won't add spring onion before because we need to get the spring onion in crunchy that gives a nice texture color contrast to the fried rice as well as the flavor you can see the smoke coming through that means the rice is ready to serve now i'm going to plate it i'm going to show you how to make a confit chicken actually original version is with duck that is confit the kana uh most of people cannot find the duck and the duck fat so i thought why not i'll try with the chicken and at the same time i made a nice uh butter bean uh stew which comes really nice and goes with really nice with the confit let's try it let's find out what is confit confit means an ingredient cooked in a slow with fat that helps to give a rich and succulent flavor to the meat first thing is cure the meat for that you have to rub chicken with rock salt and leave it at least 5 to 8 hours that will penetrate the flavors to the meat once it's done you have to clean the excess salt you can rub it or wash it and take it out all the excess salt before cooking This is very important to take the excess salt otherwise it's going to be too salty. Make sure to clean it nicely. Butter to a pan with some oil and let it slowly to melt. the butter add rosemary thyme peppercorn garlic and drop the chicken and cover it and cook at least 1 to 1 and 1/2 hours depending on the size of the chicken meantime you can prep the bean stew chopped garlic onion carrot you can cut them into dices
and get a pan with some butter add garlic onion sweat without coloring add carrot bay leaf thyme and cook for the 1 2 minute before adding the beans finally add the beans mix well then add the chicken stock and just cover it and let it cook if you want smoky flavor add some smoked sausage or if you want or if you are a fan of pork well add some pancetta that's the best for the bean stew that gives an amazing flavor cover it and cook for about 30 minutes skim time to time if necessary check the seasoning and finally add some chopped parsley Wow, the chicken is seems to be ready now. Looks it's changed the color and you can see the bone came out. That's how the easiest way to find out the chicken is fully cooked and ready. switch off the heat cover and leave it for the 45 to 1 hour in the fat that helps to settle the flavors finally after drain the fat you can pan fry the skin if you like to have it crispy to serve arrange the beans and get the chicken on top garnish with parsley and finally add some cooking fat around that gives an amazing flavor to the beans and for the whole dish I'm going to make a cashew curry. Uh, for that, I'm going to use raw cashew nut. You can find it in the supermarket, but it's hard to cook. So what I'm going to do is I will soak it about two hours in the water. Then it's become nice, tender, and fast to cook. So this will help to give the nice texture when you cook the cashew. So don't waste the time. Let's start making. get onion clean and chopped half of the onion would be fine chopped finely 
set aside get garlic as well same way two garlic would be enough finely chop and set aside get pan heated with oil add mustard cinnamon lemongrass let the mustard to get start pop up add onion curry leaves garlic and mix it well cook for the few minutes until all onion and garlic start getting soft add some salt chili flakes and further cook add cashew nut you can see the cashew nut is nicely soaked and it's expanded little bit so that cashew is very soft very fast to cook add turmeric curry powder mix it well and cook further because this time you need to get all the curry powder turmeric to get nicely coated with all the cashew nut pour the coconut milk about 1 cup and let it cook you can see it start getting boil add green chilies that gives a nice flavor to curry especially when you cook with coconut milk cover it and cook for 5 minutes add green peas season with salt and pepper always according to your taste you can see the sauce is reduced but i prefer little further reduction because cashew curry need to be a very thick gravy you can see now is ready this time squeeze some lemon juice especially when you cook with coconut milk end of the dish try to use lime because it's elevate the flavor now our dish is ready so i'm going to serve it like this to make a sri lankan dish called chicken devil this is one of the most popular dish in sri lanka and it's a combination of chinese and sri lankan flavors so don't waste the time let's move to make it I'm going to use diced chicken 500 grams, 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of turmeric, 1 teaspoon of vinegar, 2 teaspoons of dark soy sauce and mix it well. Here you can use any chicken if you want. If you want breast, you can use it as well. Now I'm going to marinate for about 1 hour. you can keep it in the fridge until it get so meantime i'm going to prep my vegetable diced bell pepper diced onion you can use one onion medium size and also one capsicum slice them into slant also chop 
garlic and ginger. Finally, cut one tomato into dices. After one hour of marination, we are going to shallow fry the chicken. So for that, you get the oil heated and drop the chicken into the heated oil. Make sure not to do deep fry uh, because it's started getting shrink if you get deep fry so once it's golden brown take it out it might take eight minutes to cook it it also depend on the size of the chicken and the temperature make sure to cook it until golden brown next get a wok heated with some oil and add ginger garlic also two teaspoons of chili flakes saute nicely add three tablespoons of dark soy sauce one tablespoon of tomato sauce mix it well you can add one tablespoon of oyster sauce if you like now add the onions peppers mix it well also the capsicum cook about one minute to two then add the chicken Toast it well or if you can mix it nicely and cook for the 3 minutes until sauce nicely coated with the vegetable and chicken. This time don't overcook the vegetable, it need to be crunchy. So after add the dice tomatoes tossed well and spring onion as well finally now our dish is almost done you can see is nice in color glossy so now we are going to plate it up get a plate and serve it and garnish with some coriander. I'm going to show you how to make a lemon pose, which is very easy, quick and fast dessert. Only you need three ingredients and let's see how I make it then. The ingredients we are using is lemon, double cream, and caster sugar get a pan and add the double cream let it simmer stir time to time once it start getting simmer add sugar Continue the stirring. You can add some lemon zest. Make sure when you take the zest, don't go deeper because the white part is bitter. So make sure to scrape only the yellow skin. Stir and let it get boiled. You can see it start getting slightly thicker. That means 
it's getting boiled. Once it start boil, add lemon juice. When you add lemon juice, you can see is getting much more thicker the mixture. Stir. Don't stop the stirring. See, it's getting thicker and thicker. When it's come to this stage, you can see it's almost changed the color. That means the mixture is ready to portion. Get a bowl and strain the mixture. Sometimes you don't like to get the lemon zest to your dessert. So better to strain it and keep it in the fridge for two hours to get set. This is very popular British dessert. You can make it very quickly. Time to serve. I like to decorate with some fruits and biscuit crumble. Our dessert is now ready. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. You will never miss my videos again. Thank you for watching once again.